Hello, and welcome to tomorrow's talk today. I'm your host, Dylan, and today I'm joined by special guests Emma, Zach, Dustin, and Allie. On today's episode, we'll be discussing the issue of climate change, focusing on how climate change has come to where it is, Virginia's stance on climate change, the myths around climate change, and how the younger generation is reacting. Our guests today have watched and analyzed the 2021 movie Don't Look Up and videos focusing on the details of climate change and vocal actors to this movement. To begin our discussion, let's take a quick look at a clip from a Don't Look Up breakdown. If I were to describe Don't Look Up in a nutshell, it would be an analogy of modern day culture and our inability to hear and listen to uh, scientific truth. I often in my career looked for a film that had an environmental undertone to it, but much like the inundation of news on climate change, a lot of people don't want to hear it and making a film about it is an even more difficult task to take on. And Adam, who's an incredibly outspoken individual on the climate crisis, really wanted to do a film that brought, you know, an element of dark comedy to what seems to be a daunting issue. Look up focuses on a real life issue, and that is climate change. Recently, Governor Yunkin announced that he intends to withdraw Virginia from the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative, which is a climate program focusing on reducing carbon emissions. Dustin, what are your thoughts on this? Well, this is a very tough situation. Governor Youngkin has a major influence on all of the population in Virginia, as well as many of these other mid-eastern and southeastern states. So if we see this trend continue throughout the U.S., it will set a major setback on how we as global c citizens are promoting a healthier planet and life. And it seems that Governor Youngkin's reasons for wanting to withdraw Virginia from this is aimed at reducing a carbon tax, which would save Virginians on average around $52 per year. Emma, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, so as Justin said, Virginia not taking carbon emissions seriously would set a precedent, precedent to let any other state not take it seriously. And if you really think about it, how important is money if we don't have more time on the planet? We should be extending the time that we have on Earth rather than shortening it for $52. And Zach, do you kind of feel the same way? Absolutely. I feel like money isn't everything in this situation. Like, you know, climate change is affecting the whole planet. It's affecting everybody on Earth as things change over time. So I feel like in this case, you know, saving, you know, $52 or so for each American in Virginia and just so on just really isn't a big deal at this point. I feel like we need to focus on the bigger picture and just do our best to actually reduce these emissions and just kind of like save our planet and just look for a way to just you know, be the best humans that we can since we live on this planet and we should take care of it. Yeah, for sure. Allie, what are your overall thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean, I think climate change takes collaboration in general and um, one state getting out of the partnership implies that more states will get out of the partnership, which doesn't lead to collaboration and overall impact. So you think this decision overall matters? Yeah, I do. Um, I think Virginia sets an example necessarily for other states that might follow and watch what we're doing. And you all would agree, right? Yes. Sorry we have to end the discussion here. We have to take a quick break, but we'll be right back, so stay tuned. You're listening to WMON 91.3 FM, the music of Longwood University and Farmville, Virginia. He rebounds to Phillips. Great, strong rebound by Cody Phillips. And Jordan Henry with the mid range jumper. Goes down. Off the backboard. So the sports committee within WMLU is an uh, award-winning committee in itself, and it's an opportunity for people to be able to call Division One athletic events. Uh, basketball, we've done soccer, we've done softball for the first time last year. Uh, this year we're doing tennis for the first time, which I'm excited about, as well as baseball in the mix as well. So it's an opportunity for people to get on-air experience, learn who they are as a play-by-play, on-air talent. And there's a lot of different things that kind of come with that. All right, so with WMIU Sports, there's always three people uh, working a game. So usually there will either be two people calling the game, color and play-by-play, -play, and then there will be one person in the studio working the soundboard right here. The soundboard is to, uh, to make sure that the guys or girls at that game are sounding good, they can hear them over the air or the web stream. If there's any problems, the person in the studio is able to adapt and adjust and make sure that everything here is working well. 
I'm a proud Longwood graduate, comm class of 2011, and there is no way I would be here if it weren't for my time behind the mic at WMLU, the music of Longwood University and the award-winning home of your Longwood Lancers. So this is an opportunity to grow, learn, uh, figure out what works best for you, what skills you have, what makes you a good on-air talent, good play-by-play -play person. Uh, but it's also, of course, an opportunity to just meet new people with similar interests. In inherently, if you're joining the sports committee, you probably like sports. And then everybody else in the room does too. So it's an opportunity to grow, make new friends, and have that commonality between other individuals. 11.44 left in the second half. It brings us to our under 12-minute media timeout. So we'll come back with Harper Baker at the Charity Stripe here on WMIU Farmville 91.3 FM. Welcome back. Next, we are going to be focusing on the ozone layer, how we got here, and the ramifications. So let's turn to Emma and Zach. So Emma and Zach, what are your overall thoughts on the ozone layer? I know you did some research on it. Yeah, so basically an overview of the ozone layer, it's this sort of barrier of atoms that protects um, the Earth from harmful UVA, UV um, rays. And it's being damaged by these things called chlorofluorocarbons, or known as CPC, CPCs. And they were um, commonly used in refrigerants or aerosols. And they would sort of float up into the atmosphere and destroy the ozone itself. Um, and the two thinnest parts were over the poles. And so there was a hole around the Arctic that was massive. And luckily, it's been shrinking in size due to some changes. But without ozone, we sort of will be faced with a lot of dangerous um, ramifications from increased UV rays, including higher skin cancer rates or even just a destruction of our environment. And Zach, what are some things that the United States is doing in regards to this? So the United States is trying to combat this in any way that it can. Obviously, with emissions going up and people trying to, you know, combat this major problem, more humans are actually seeing a change in the ozone layer. And like Emma said, at the poles, it's the weakest. So it's uh, there's a visible change over the years. In the United States, uh, a Biden administration actually joined the Paris Agreement. So the Paris Agreement is kind of to combat climate change emissions, which are actually uh, affecting the poles here in other areas of the Earth. And their plan is by 2030, they have to come up with a, like a solid plan to give to the rest of everyone who's involved a way to kind of reduce the emissions. So, you know, combating cars, uh, combating different uh, major businesses, just major areas on this earth that are affecting the climate change. So they're trying to lay out a solid plan and kind of work with everybody else who's involved. And this is a great way to kind of just, you know, take a step back and look at what's happened over the years and try to combat all that's going on. Right. And do you think they will reach their goal by the year 2030? I believe they definitely could, as long as they stay on track and stay focused. I mean, you know, they have a whole, you know, about eight years left now, and it's like if they really narrow in on the major problems and everything, they can really try to solve everything that's going on here for sure. Right. Do you think there would be any other ways that we could attempt to resolve it? I feel like just kind of looking at what is really important and what kind of like adds up all the emissions on the earth, definitely, like I said, cars, uh, you know, factories, all these big uh, impacts that are just just kind of wiping the stuff off the earth. I mean, just, I kind of feel like just kind of taking a step back and looking at it from a different perspective and just, you know, alerting Americans about what is happening and just kind of urging them to take action themselves. You know, just, I guess just the big picture, looking at what really matters, like the cars and the factories and the other big things that kind of influence the emissions. That's what we need to kind of influence Americans to kind of take a step back and work towards, you know, changing so that we have a healthier and happier environment on Earth. And you agree with that, Yeah, Emma? I definitely agree. I think it's also important for each individual American to look at what they're doing on the daily and try and figure out their best ways to lessen emissions or lessen their carbon footprint overall. I mean, we look at our campus individually and we don't have plastic straws anymore. We have recyclable plastic. So maybe these small changes can add up and make big change overall. For sure. Thank you, Emma and Zach. Here's a video of people working to bring awareness to that issue. A hole appears in the ozone layer over the South Pole. <laughs> 
hole in the ozone shield is the size of the continental United States. The protective ozone layer is being threatened as never before. We're all at risk. Scientists warned that humanity was on track to completely destroy the ozone layer by 2050. Without it, ecosystems would collapse, skin cancer rates would skyrocket, and life as we know it would cease to exist. So, you know, of course, the ozone layer, talking about that and overall climate change. Do you think there's any other pressing issues uh, other than just climate change, Dustin? Well, I think that there is kind of two major levels that it kind of falls under. Um, yes, we know that the emissions is producing a lot of a lot of trouble with climate change, but we also know that the ocean is the largest CO2 and heat intake on the world. So if we're polluting and mass fishing in our oceans, we're removing the ways for the ocean currents to move throughout the ocean. So this is causing a major impact and how the globe as a whole is taking in CO2 emissions and heat. And Allie, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think that um, I agree with that. The ocean is definitely a huge part of something we should be focusing on with climate change. And I do believe that um, with pollution affecting the ozone, we are <clears throat> limiting ourselves to more um, radiation and harmful rays and then potential heat diseases as well. Yeah, I definitely agree with all that. Um, we're going to take a quick break, but we'll be right back. The Communication Studies Department has always prided itself on having our students do original research. And in the fall of 2018, when I was teaching that class, I wanted to look for a way to have our students present that research in a different manner. And I did a little research, and I could not find anyone else who had live streamed original undergraduate research. So I kind of came up with the idea to have the students present it, and Dr. Paul was very agreeable here. And so rather than doing a traditional poster session or something like that, uh, we came up with the idea to have our students present their research in front of the camera. And the cool thing about that is the distribution is much wider than it would be typically. Parents, alumni, friends of the department all got to watch that research, and the students also had something that was more lasting that they could look at later in life than a traditional poster format. So one of the ultimate aims of doing research is that you get to share it with somebody and that it's just not for yourselves or just to have some sort of document. It's to be able to disseminate that research, whether you have significant findings or not. And so being able to have an audience for, for your research project is, is paramount. And having an opportunity to live stream it gives students an awesome opportunity to be able to share it with a large audience. So being in the studio, there's just nothing like that. Uh, it's the whole overall experience. You got the cameras, the lights, everything in front of you, um, being on the stage and all the information's there. And you have one take to get, get that information out as efficiently as you can compared to having a poster session where people come and go as they please and you're just set at one spot for X amount of time. So being in the studio, there's, it's just a great experience, nothing like it. Thanks for sticking around. To end our discussion today, let's take a look at a clip from Linda Morch. In my experience, I'd like to sort of get at three myths and slash them. Myth number one, climate change will happen sometime in the distant future. Myth number two, climate change will happen to someone else and not me. Myth number three, it will be easy to adapt to climate change. After seeing, after seeing that, how are we all feeling, Dustin? So this is the hard part about the situation, is getting everybody on the same climate change regulations page, as you can call it. We are seeing these myths setting new standards for every individual, whether they believe in the changes or not, and the overarching myth is the Earth's temperature. We know that since the beginning of the industrial times near the 1800s, we've seen a temperature rise two degrees, and it's expected to rise another two degrees by the end of this decade, 
and then an additional two degrees by 2050. Solar radiation energy actually comes from the sun and it reduces the heat here on Earth, but is it only expected to reduce the heat maybe half a degree within the next decade? So we're looking at a half degree de deduction and a six degree rise. We also have to think how this is going to impact the next generation. Their resources and opportunities throughout life will be lessened gradually because of this. So it seems that all these myths are really playing a huge part in like, the steady decline uh, due to climate change. Uh, Emma, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, so myths and misinformation are definitely impacting how people are viewing this issue, and it makes it a lot more difficult for us to start making steady change so we can extend our time and find less of a way to continue the impacts we're making on our planet. And so I just hope that eventually we can get to a point where everyone is on the same level of understanding about the topic and we can truly, truly make change before it's too late. And um, again, you know, miss, of course, misinformation. What are some things you think we could do, Zach, to combat that? I feel like just educating all Americans on like what is actually happening is just a great way to start. I really uh, agree with what Dustin said earlier about just, you know, like how things are going. Uh, the temperature is kind of, you know, changing so quickly, I guess. But also in a way that if we educate all Americans and we prepare uh, the future generations for what's happening, I feel like that's just really a great start overall just because you know they're the ones who carry on all the legacy going forward and they need to take care of our planet and we need to show them that we care about our planet so if we all just work together and try to go forward with that i feel like that's a great way to start and ali do you kind of feel the same way as all, all of them yeah i mean i think with myths especially like it just comes down to the scientific facts and not believing them or not doing your research and i think to end myths we have to keep expanding the research that we are doing and giving information to people as quickly as we can. For sure. And with all this fake information out there, can you believe how impressive it is that the younger generation is actually speaking out? With the internet and TED Talks out there, you have Greta, Vishtar, and so many others speaking out for their generation. And so, Ali, how do you feel about the younger generation speaking out on this? Um, so, our gen the younger generation has seen more impacts from climate change than any other generation. I think that the older generations felt that they, it was in the far future because they hadn't seen all of these impacts that are happening and we've seen flooding and wildfires and all sorts of things that show that climate change is real and it is happening. And I think the younger generation is trying to put out information quickly and using the media to expand it and get what they feel is right and tell people to do it faster. Sure. And Emma, how do you feel about it? Yeah, so I definitely think that the younger generation, it's honestly very inspiring to see how much they're taking accountability for this and noticing that we do need to make a change. And I love that they're using their social media platforms for it. I mean, almost everyone I know personally has a social media account and it truly means a lot seeing posts about wildfires or seeing posts about um, other impacts that are having, I mean, tornadoes outside of the normal tornado season. Um, and it's almost important that we see our peers and we're called to action within our own communities to make changes. And Dustin, do you believe that it's working, all of this? Um, I would say that I'm seeing some changes and it's great that the, our generation is using the media, especially their media pages, to push this critical information out to the public, but we also have to see the media platforms do the same thing as well. And these are the platforms and the businesses that are now running economy. They have the financial means to be able to help the situation, so we have to see them set these standards. For sure. And Zach, lastly, I how feel do you feel? Like, yeah, especially with uh, Greta and everybody, she's speaking for the younger generation. She was actually Times 2019 Person of the Year. Uh, you know, she has over 20,000 people from the UK to Japan supporting her, so she's definitely a big influence among the young. And I feel like she can really, like, push the younger generation forward, especially with the issue on climate change, as she also influences other leaders and just people to follow her in her footsteps to try to make a big change. A step in the right direction, for sure. Thank you all for your insight, and I'd like to thank you all for joining me. This has been quite the discussion, but that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching today's Tomorrow Talk. I'm your host, Dylan, and we'll see you next time.